It's Thursday, November 17, 2022, and this is the morning news here on TV3. Coming up, the headlines. In the morning's bulletin, Chief Justice Anne Shiraj has cautioned chiefs against settling cases of child abusers and domestic violence in their palaces. Also coming up, Minister for Health bemoans continuous refusal of doctors to take up postings to remote communities. Ghanaians cautioned against travelling to Abuja in Nigeria due to dire security threats in the country. This morning, we will be finding some answers. NATO chief James Stolenberg says the blast in Poland late Tuesday was caused by Ukraine's air defense system. These and some other stories coming your way this morning. Do stay with us. <coughs> We're on DSTV, channel 279, also streaming across the world on Facebook at TV3. My name is Godwin Asidiba. The Deputy Commissioner for the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, Shiraj Mesilabi, is proposing punitive measures against chiefs who engage in settling child abuse and domestic violence cases at home. She was reacting to caution by the Chief Justice, Kusini Nyebua, to chiefs not to settle such cases in their palaces since they are criminal in nature and must be dealt with by the law courts. Criminal cases, the law says that it is the courts who has been mandated to handle. So if a child is defiled, if a child is raped, so it can be defilement, it can be rape. And all these ones are criminal offenses and the law doesn't mandate chiefs and family members to determine these cases. It's the issue of defilement and then uh, rape. People have been doing it, but we have not sanctioned them or we have not taken them through any process to see that what they are doing is wrong. That's why they keep on doing it. I have not come across any law that says that when they are not supposed to handle and they handle, they should be punished. But the issue is that criminal cases never die. So if even if the chiefs handles it, it's still pending. And if the police want to continue investigating or prosecuting the person, they can go on and prosecute it. Because what has been done at the chief's palace, the law doesn't recognize it. So it is one or two things that we have to look at. We have to let the police also make sure that even when the chief handles the matter, it doesn't end the matter. The law is that the perpetrators are to be prosecuted. It's a criminal offense and there is punishment attached to it. The punishment is terms of imprisonment, not even the option of a fine. The chiefs, can they give terms of imprisonment? They can't. They don't have that power. So what they are doing there, it's different from what the court is supposed to do. Join me to Parliament and let's talk health. The Minister for Health, Kikwa Jimanmenu, has revealed only one doctor out of 10 posted to the OT region reported to work. He says medical doctors are demanding 40% of basic salaries as an incentive allowance before accepting postings to deprived communities. He was speaking in Parliament yesterday. Willingness of health workers to accept posting to any of the deprived areas is based on willingness of health Willingness of health workers to accept posting to any of the deprived areas is based on the following financial and non-financial incentives. One, non-financial incentives. Among others, Mr. Speaker, a scholarship to be granted, residential accommodation defined by existing policy, standard medical equipment, and transfer after three to five years service upon request. Two, financial incentives. Direct financial incentives include, recommended, include 34% basic salary as incentive allowance for mild deprived areas, 38% of basic salary as incentive allowance for moderate deprived areas, and 40% of basic salary as incentive allowance 
for severe deprived areas. Mr. Speaker, as a follow-up to the survey, a technical review workshop is underway to review the various options that emerged from the survey and cost the financial incentive package that was proposed. For the next steps, Mr. Speaker, we are considering the validation of deprived districts at the regional level. The conduct of a validation meeting with stakeholders to recommend the policy options and the costing of the incentive package. Preparation of a cabinet memo and submission of this memo to cabinet for consideration. Finally, Mr. Speaker, we will consider a parliamentary approval for the findings to assist implementation of the incentive package. It is hoped that this will help ensure that medical doctors and other professionals are served postings to deprive and or underserved areas in order to attain the goal of the universal health program. Still staying on condition of doctors, General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association, Titus Bayou, says until government implements recommendations made on the issue of doctors, practitioners will continue to receive postings to deprived areas. It's a scientific work that was done. The work was submitted back to the ministry that commissioned the committee. They have the full details of it. We have made appeals on various platforms, but at our annual general conference, we made an appeal again that the ministry, for that matter, government, should implement that committee's report if they really want to see a change in the distribution of critical health manpower in this country. If we keep using the old thing of we have posted 10 people and they didn't go, we posted 200 people here and they didn't go, we will be dancing around the problem. The person who is going to that place deserves the same thing as a person working in Accra. There is no point in just lamenting and us not acting. We ought to act. We have made suggestions on this severally. Market forces are at play. And we should not use the term the doctors were posted and they refused posting. No. You declare your vacancies, the doctors will choose whether they want to work there or not. Like any skilled labor. They have the choice to choose where they want to work and where their service is needed most and where they think they would get the best return uh, for the training that they have done. Ranking member on the Health Committee in Parliament, Kwabna Meta Nkando, has asked the Ministry to, of Finance to immediately release monies received from the National Health Insurance Levy to the National Health Insurance Scheme. In his opinion, the imposition of top-ups on health care services, if not controlled, might be disastrous for ordinary people. Out of the 2.056 billion, it's collected, paid only 127 million or 6.2% to the National Health Insurance Fund. We have issued several statements calling on the Minister for Finance to release National Health Insurance levies and the component of the state contributions meant for the scheme to the National Health Insurance Fund, all to no avail. Under the current economic conditions, more Ghanaians than ever before will require the National Health Insurance Scheme to finance their medical needs. It is therefore unconscionable for government to hold on to monies collected in the name of the National Health Insurance Authority, rendering it incapable of meeting its obligation to service providers. As members of parliament, we will want to caution the minister, the finance minister to, as a matter of agency, release all collections of National Health Insurance Levy to the National Health Insurance Fund without delay. The current situation of owing claims far above the statutory limits cannot be acceptable under these precarious economic conditions Government must, as a matter of agency, revert to the regular and reliable schedules as envisioned in the National Health Insurance Authority Act and report to Parliament as required. We also plead with manufacturers, importers and wholesalers of pharmaceuticals and private health service providers to delay the imposition of top-up to reduce mobility, mortality and mobility. You're still watching the morning news with me, Godwin Asidi. By way from Parliament, let's talk about security-related issues as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration has stated a security alert to Ghanaians travelling to Abuja in Nigeria 
was not authorized. The ministry had warned Ghanaians against traveling to Abuja due to the high dangers of terrorism, kidnappings, among other security threats. However, in a separate press release, it says it is not aware of any cases of Ghanaians being targeted to be attacked in Abuja. All right, to throw more light on this particular story, joining us on phone to help us understand the situation better is Paul Griff Boache Dankwa. He is a, governance, a government spokesperson on governance and security. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Godwin, and a very good morning to your listeners and viewers. All right, is there a credible intel on the security threats in Abuja? And so we would want to assure the Ghanaian people the situation in Abuja is under control. And that at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, we have not received any such threats at all. And that the Ghanaian people who wish to do business continually in Abuja can have the opportunity to do that. But how safe are Ghanaians living in that part of the country, Nigeria? Ghanaians are very safe, and we are sure the Ghanaian people that their relatives and friends and family in Nigeria are safe. Okay, so the Foreign Affairs Second Statement indicates it was not authorized to issue the security alert. How can there be a seeming confusion over something critical as this? We are investigating the erroneous error of the statement that was released. Okay, but then, I mean, from your experience and whatever you know about this particular situation, from where you sit, what advice would you have to tell Ghanaians who are hoping to travel to Nigeria? I assure the Ghanaian people that if you desire to travel to Nigeria, you have the full support of the government and you are safe. All right. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Away from that, the World Cup is a multi-billion venture. It is estimated Qatar has spent over $2 billion to host the World Cup. But... The Mundial is not a capital incentive event for only host nations to participating teams alone. Some football fans across the globe would have to spend their life savings to witness the once in almost half a decade event. My colleague Emmanuel Samani has more in this report. For many football fanatics, the Mundial is a pilgrimage embarked on every four years. Like any religious pilgrimage, a trip to the World Cup takes years of preparation, dedication and sometimes sacrifices. With barely a week to go, football fans across the world are packing up their replica shirts, national flags and rehearsing their chants ahead of the 2022 World Cup in Qatar. I've come to see some footballing fans who will be in Qatar to support the Black Stars. Okay, so it's a bright Saturday afternoon here at the Narnia FC Park and uh, you know football is just a passion of the country. As you can see behind me some kids are you know trying out their skills, their shooting skills and all that. But we're here to speak with one individual who has been to every World Cup that Ghana has been to. I'm talking 2006, 2010, 2014 and heading into the 2022 Qatar World Cup. He will be there. Just talk about uh, how much really it's involved in getting yourself from Accra to Doha. Let's get into it. How does it feel like watching the Black Stars play at the World Cup final? It's, it's, I mean, you can't describe it. It's more an experience. In The ecstasy comes with a good game. The ecstasy comes with good football. And if we, have, we are honest, all three World Cups Ghana has been, we have played good football. It would cost over 10,000 CDs in flight fees alone to travel to the hosting country Qatar from here in Ghana. So what happens is uh, it's more to do with you pay official prices. I mean the third party tickets, those are the ones that can basically take your budget a little bit over in the sense that it's demand and supply. But I've been to enough World Cups to know when to actually purchase them. You wait till just before the game starts and you get literally at face value. If one decides to watch all three matches of the Black Stars, that is some $600 and about 7,000 CDs. And that ticket price is only if you are one of the 2.9 million early birds who have purchased the 3.1 million tickets on sale. 
But could that be a drop in the pocket or a worthy sacrifice for a fan who would hope to catch a glimpse of what could arguably be the last World Cup of the greatest footballing stars, Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo? For this year, Kenneth has bought a complete package from FIFA that has tied him to the Black Stars to the finals. Qatar, I would say, for me, most of the time, I do everything through FIFA. Most of my stuff I do through FIFA, so cost-wise, I do not pay more than the official prices for the World Cup. Yal Bene, a football fanatic, has also followed the Black Stars all around major tournaments. I absolutely love football and if Ghana is playing, you know, if I can afford to be there, yes, I, I think I should be there. Like Kenneth, Yao has also bought a package from FIFA. I started planning for this way before uh, problems really manifested. So, yes, uh, because I've already made the arrangements, um, I'm not, it's not as if I'm now paying for tickets now. I, I paid for the tickets way back in, I think, April or May. Yeah. The Ghana supporters are an amalgamation of 40 support groups and the spine of the Black Stars fan base. The over 100 strong team have had representation at every tournament. But to have them everywhere the Black Stars play is a great cost. For a minimum package fee of $5,000 per head, just taking 100 of these fans to the Mundial would cost half a million dollars. But with football's governing body FIFA allocating some $2.5 million to the Ghana Football Association, they could be lucky recipients of some portions of that fund. They are, however, hopeful corporate Ghana would come to their aid. As we speak, Ghana supporters, we don't even know how many are we going. Even though Minister has mentioned that definitely we're going to go, but as to how many are we going, we don't know. Um, maybe any moment from now, we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be receiving a call that maybe we should come for a slot. I don't know. So now you might be wondering, how much is it going to cost you to go to Doha and experience the World Cup? Well, there are a few things that we need to take into consideration. First of all, your airfare is going to cost you some States dollars and with accommodation is also going to cost you around the same. That's also $1,800. Now, the most important thing why you went there, the match tickets, if Ghana is going to go all the way to the finals, will cost you at least $1,000. And let's say you spend, let's say, $500 on feeding, that's also there, and pocket money for any eventualities. So let's say you're taking along some $1,000. So that gives us a grand total of $5,900. A report there by Emmanuel Samani. The Ghana Black Stars take on Switzerland today in an international friendly ahead of the Qatar World Cup kickoff. We shall go live to Abu Dhabi where my colleague Yao Ofusulabi is to get a better understanding of how the players are, you know, reacting to this particular match that will be coming off. And I know that a number of Ghanaians are anticipating. But before we speak to Yao, the National Tripartite Committee has announced a 10% increase in the 2023 National Daily Minimum Wage. The committee has also announced a 15% cost of living allowance for workers who are beneficiaries of the Daily Minimum Wage. Included as follows. One, an increase in the National Daily Minimum Wage by 10% over the 2022 National Daily Minimum Wage, which translates into a new National Daily Minimum Wage of 14 cities, 88 pesos, and a cost of living allowance of 15% over the 2023 National Daily Minimum Wage. The effective date for the implementation of the 2023 National Daily Minimum Wage shall be 1st January 2023. All establishments, institutions, or organizations whose daily minimum wage wages are below the new rates should adjust accordingly effective 1st January 2023. Any establishment, institution, or organization that flouts the 2023 National Daily Minimum Wage shall be sanctioned in accordance with the law. 
the NTC recommends that the 2023 national daily minimum wage should be tax exempt. This is a, through, a true vindication of the essence of tripartism. We are forever committed to this cause, and we know that we are in all of this together, and working together, we shall overcome whatever challenge that lies ahead of us. Let's take some international news now. The NATO chief, Jen Stolenberg, says the blast in Poland late on Tuesday was likely caused by Ukraine's air defense systems. He echoed the word of Poland's President Duda, who also said there was no sign that the missile hit part of an international attack. Two people were killed after a missile landed in eastern Poland near the Ukrainian border following a wave of Russian strikes across Ukraine. Earlier, UK Prime Minister Rashid Sunak said the UK and its allies were trying to establish the facts about the blast. US President Joe Biden has also said it was unlikely that the missile was fired from Russia. We draw the curtains here. My name is Godwin Asidwa. The show continues with Ben.